Hi, my name is Glenn Burgetts, and I'm a filmmaker, and I'm happy to accept Tony Newton's invitation uh, to speak about filmmaking. And first question, how did I get started in filmmaking? This goes back quite a while now. This was around 2007, 2008. And I had been writing screenplays since the 1990s, and I had uh, nearly a dozen completed feature film scripts. And I was trying to shop the scripts around Hollywood, and I was getting no luck at all. I wasn't getting rejections. I just couldn't even get the scripts into the hands of any agents or studio executives, uh, producers. I couldn't even get responses from people. And after trying this for years, uh, not even getting a, a chance to be rejected, I finally decided uh, to maybe think about making films. And this came about when I spoke with a guy who used to work at Disney out in L.A., and he told me that unless you know somebody at the studio or you know a producer, you're not getting your scripts read. And he said, I should go ahead and make some films, uh, enter them in film festivals, hopefully get a little traction and maybe make some connections that way. Uh, so I took his advice and I ended up uh, getting a couple books on filmmaking. And another one was like this thick. And it was for small budget filmmaking, for indie filmmakers. Like if you only have a quarter million dollar budget or a half million dollar budget, here's how you make your film. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, a half million dollar budget? You know, I was looking to make my first uh, short film. Uh, I was looking to make about a 20 minute short. And I had about $1,500 I could put into it. And uh, so I kind of, I read the first about, I don't know, 75 or 100 pages of that huge book and then just kind of flipped through the rest of it. And uh, read a couple articles on indie filmmaking. I thought, well, I'm just going to try to pretty much figure this out for myself. I have a little idea what's going on. And so I posted uh, an ad on Craigslist looking for cast and crew. And I was living in Denver, Colorado at the time. And I got a great response to it. And I ended up uh, getting hooked up with a whole lot of really talented people. And we made a 20-minute short film called Bad Movies, Good Showers, and Civil Engineers. And it turned out... Turned out really good. I, I really enjoy the film. It's a it's a pretty lighthearted comedy. And after that, uh, messed around with a couple other short films. Uh, we made one that was a little over 20 minutes called Guernica Still Burning. That turned out fantastic. I worked with uh, the actors Jason W. Griffith and Stewie Goldstein uh, on that film, and Alan Green shot and edited it. And Guernica Still Burning turned out wonderful. And so I was really encouraged uh, with how this was going. So I thought, well, let's start making some independent films and uh, feature films. And the scripts I had up to this point uh, certainly couldn't have been shot on, you know, a couple thousand dollar budget. And that's what I was looking to put uh, into our early uh, feature films, you know, 1500 to $2,000 tops. So uh, we shot uh, a comedy called Therapist. Uh, Greg Niemer started in that. And it, it turned out really good. We got a distribution deal for it very quickly. And shortly after that, uh, we shot uh, the thriller Evil Intent. And I wrote both of these scripts uh, with a limited uh, number of cast members to keep the cost down of making a feature film and also with limited locations. For example, on Evil Intent, there are only five cast members in the entire film. And we shot the entirety of the film in one of the cast members' house, and then in my apartment. And uh, obviously it's a small budget film. You can see that when you watch the film. It's available on uh, Amazon. Uh, you can stream it there. And, uh, but it turned out really good. We've gotten great response to it. I actually got a, a limited theatrical run for it. And so I was very happy with how Evil Intent turned out. It had a great cast. Jason W. Griffith was in it. I played a small role in it. And then I had Andrea Raybould, uh, Giovanna Lea and Libby Baker played the three main roles. Uh, the, the story uh, revolved around these three women. And so Evil Intent turned out, uh, I was very pleased with it. So uh, at that point, we just started kind of steamrolling through things. And uh, we made a whole bunch of films since then. Uh, to Die is Hard, the worst movie ever. And uh, we were doing a lot more comedies for a while. Last few years, we've done uh, more kind of the horror stuff, gotten back to the comedies. Uh, our most recent films, uh, I was fortunate to get Kane Hodder uh, from the Friday the 13th films. Kane has played Jason Voorhees more than any other actor 
over the years. And Kane starred in our recent thriller, Paralyzed with Fear, uh, that we've recently, we've, we're trying an Amazon exclusive release for Paralyzed with Fear. The only place you can watch it is to stream it on Amazon. If you have Prime, it's free. Uh, if you don't, you know, it's a buck 99 uh, to, to rent it on standard definition, and 2.99 for high def. Uh, yeah, I got to work with Joe Bob Briggs. We did a, another, I, I, we, it was hard to label it, but we ended up calling it a dark comedy thriller, The Ghost of, Doc, uh, the Ghost of Johnson Woods that Joe Bob Briggs starred in. And Joe Bob was fantastic in it, along with uh, Matt Goosehurst and Hayden Harvey and Kasha Fawcett. Uh, it was a wonderful cast. They're the only four people who appear in the film. And uh, we shot that in the mountains of Colorado uh, at Eric Lassie's house. Eric uh, shot that and, and edited that film for us and did a great job with it. And that's available on Amazon as well, The Ghosts of Johnson Woods. Our more recent films, uh, we've gone back to comedy. Uh, we did a, a film came out in 2018 called Poetry Slammed. Uh, it starred Jonathan Hodges, and Jonathan did a great job with it. We kind of lampooned uh, the Poetry Slam community. Uh, again, available on Amazon uh, for streaming. And uh, while we just released Paralyzed with Fear in the last couple weeks with Kane Hodder, uh, we have a film very close to a final edit, and it's a comedy called The Death of Ivan Nussbaum. It's a take on uh, Leo Tolstoy's classic novella, The Death of Ivan Illich. Uh, in this case, we have the stand-up comic Pete Buckbauer playing the lead role, and he is fantastically funny, and Pete is so talented, and we, left it, we let him just kind of riff at, uh, when he wanted to uh, with the script, and we have whole scenes that's just him riffing and uh, working, uh, molding his stand-up material into the script. And uh, Kedron Rather co-stars in it. She's fantastic. Jonathan Hodges makes an appearance. Uh, I get to be in it too. Uh, Trish, Trish Basinger is in it and she does a fantastic job. So probably sometime late 2020, early 2021, we'll have the death of Ivan Newsbaum out there. I assume it'll be available on Amazon, maybe other places as well. I have been in filmmaking now. Uh, well, I guess what, 2008 was when we made Bad Movies, Good Showers, and Civil Engineers. And at this time, I don't have any new projects on the horizon. Uh, we do have a short film we shot a couple years ago that we're finally just getting around at. It'll probably be around 30 minutes long called Spring Break Chaos, and it's pure pandemonium. And uh, so I'm curious how that'll turn out. We, I, we shot it... 2016 so it's been four years ago and we just kind of let the footage sit around and finally just starting to put some of it together I'm thrilled uh, with the couple scenes I've seen so hopefully the whole thing will will turn out as, as much fun as those couple scenes no idea when it'll be ready but eh, at some point hopefully in, by 2021 we might have that one ready to go and we'll do something with it. I don't know Amazon or whatever uh, it might be appropriate uh, for the Roku channel OSI 74 uh, they've shown a number of our films, uh, including, and they just brought it out on DVD on the Cinema Insomnia show, is hosted by Mr. Lobo, our, our very misunderstood uh, horror comedy midget zombie takeover. And uh, we got that in a few theaters around the country. Six of our feature films have gotten limited theatrical runs around the country in anywhere from about four to a dozen theaters. And Midget Zombie Takeover got into a dozen theaters. It was the one we got into the most and I love the film. It, you know, it's certainly not for everyone. All the reviews we got for it either said, this is a fantastically fun film, you know, enjoy the ride, or they said, this is maybe the worst film I've ever seen in my life. So take that for what it is. And uh, we had a DVD release for it. It's available on Amazon for streaming. But recently, uh, Mr. Lobo in Cinema Insomnia, uh, they brought it out on DVD, their version of it, where Mr. Lobo hosted the screening of it. Uh, on, on the, his Cinema Insomnia TV show, and they aired it in black and white, and Mr. Lobo is fantastic in the host uh, sketches uh, between, between segments. And uh, so that's available, what, on oldies.com, Alpha Video. And the film's been out for a couple months. It finally just dropped out of the top 20 in sales. And, but we're still in the top 60, even months after its release. So if you're interested in uh, seeing our film, Midget Zombie Takeover, that's a place where you can pick it up, oldies.com, Alpha Video. And plus, you get to see uh, Mr. Lobo in action, which is always a good thing. My suggestions for people wanting to get into filmmaking is keep it simple. 
uh, I wrote a book a few years ago called The Independent Filmmaker's Guide, Make Your Feature Film for $2,000. And the film, or the book continues to sell fairly well. And I think the reason for that is it's just very much uh, a step-by-step -step guide for how to make your feature film on a micro budget, keeping things simple, uh, crafting your script with very few cast members and with few locations, uh, not worrying a lot about lighting. We typically just use whatever lighting we have available. We open window blinds, we turn on overhead lights, occasionally bring a reading lamp over to fill things in a little bit if it's a little too dark. Uh, so we don't get bogged down in uh, you know, slowing the shoot down with lots of lighting, bringing a lot of light, lighting equipment in. The one thing I would suggest as well uh, for aspiring filmmakers, really work hard to get good audio. That's where we've uh, always had to, to put a lot of our focus is getting good audio. And, and that's one of the things that can really hurt your film. We actually did a sketch comedy TV show called Driving With Our Eyes Shut. And Alan Green edited it. And he told me that we couldn't use maybe the funniest sketch. It was a longer sketch. It was about five or six minutes long. And I played in it with Lauren Von Engown, who's been in a bunch of our films, uh, including uh, To Die Is Hard and The Ghosts of Johnson, or uh, Paralyzed With Fear that's coming out here, or that's just been released. And Lauren and I play boyfriend, girlfriend in it, and things just get totally bizarre with a stuffed animal throughout the sketch. But well, what had happened was, it's a lengthier sketch. We had about, I don't know, eight or 10 different scenes in it, but the very first scene that set everything up in it, the audio, we just couldn't use any of it. We couldn't get any audio at all from it. And Alan said, rightfully so, that without that audio in the first scene, the rest of the sketch didn't really make sense. Uh, so we had to scrap that. So if you're a young filmmaker, really work hard to make sure you get good audio. Uh, double check you know, if you can, before you move on, because so often with our micro-budget films, we shoot an entire film, entire feature film, in anywhere from two to five days, so we'll shoot a scene once or twice, and I'll look over at the director of photography and say, hey, how'd it look to you? And if he or she says, hey, it looks okay, I'll say, well, yeah, it looked okay to me. Let's move on to the next scene, and, and that's cost us a time or two, uh, not having the time to go back and double-check. Uh, so yeah, if you're an aspiring filmmaker, really work hard to make sure uh, you get that good audio. If you have the time, double check it. can really come in handy. As for our current projects, uh, yeah, we have a Spring Break Chaos. Maybe next year it might be ready. Uh, we'll see how much time we put into that. Uh, we have The Death of Ivan Newsbaum, starring comic uh, Pete Buckbauer, coming out either late 2020, early 2021. Uh, I've seen probably a penultimate edit of it. It was really close to being done. Molly Brown uh, has shot and edited the film, just like she did uh, with Poetry Slam. And Molly's very talented and done a fantastic job with it. And uh, so, yeah, when she you know, crosses the T's and dots all the I's, uh, we'll get that one out there. I've also been uh, focusing a lot on... I had a novel published last year called Waiting for Evening to Come, very different from what we do with filmmaking. And it's a dramatic piece about race relations in the rural US in the 1950s. And I also, uh, it sprung from a script. It was originally a screenplay I wrote that I was hoping we could shoot uh, out in Colorado when I was still there. And I, I had contacted some chambers of commerce and I'd found a small town in Eastern Colorado uh, that was open to us shooting there and all, but we. There was just no way the budget was going to be too big. We figured the least we could shoot this film on to do a decent job would probably have been fifty to $100,000, and we just don't have that kind of money. And so I expanded the script because there's so much I left out of it I wanted to put in, and it, it, it became novel length. And so I got the novel published, and it's done really well. And I've had a bunch of school teachers around the U.S., English teachers and social studies teachers, contact me saying that they're using the book either this year or next year in their curriculum. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, I was able to use that information to land an agent for the screenplay of it. And her name is Christine Summers. And Christine has got the script into a number of actors' hands, and we've gotten a great response, including Dennis Haysbert. Uh, who's been in a thousand films. A lot of people know him best from the Allstate 
uh, commercials because the lead role in Waiting for Evening to Come is, is for an older African-American man. And according to his agent, he loves the script and signed a letter of intent uh, to play the lead role if we can get the film off the ground. And so we're, you know, my, my agent, Christine, she's uh, shopping the script around Hollywood, trying to get a producer or studio uh, to buy it. I would love to direct it. it. Might be totally out of my hands and selling the script, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, and yeah, Waiting for Evening to Come is available on Amazon or from Solstice Publishing, the publishing company uh, that has released the book. Also, too, uh, the big thing that's been uh, taking up my time the last few months is my band, Norwegian Soft Kitten. We're getting re ready to release our debut album. The band consists of me and Alan Green, who Alan and I have worked together on a number of our films, like The Worst Movie Ever, uh, Spring Break Chaos, To Die Is Hard. And uh, so I, I do the guitars, much of the vocals. Alan does the rest of the vocals, and he plays the keyboards and drums. And... Uh, so we're really happy with it. Uh, the title of the album is Sunshine on Lava. You can learn more about it. We have a, a Norwegian Soft Kitten Twitter page. Uh, people can follow to keep up with it. Uh, we're working on getting the cover art in place as we speak. Uh, the final edit of the album, Alan's got a little tweak here or there he's still going to do, but it's, it's going to be a colossal debut album, 18 songs uh, over 70 minutes in length. And uh, so we're really happy with it. Uh, when people ask what kind of music we play, we say we play gush music. Uh, it, you know, gush is about the only way we can describe it because there's very little way to describe it. Uh, we have pop songs, we have metal songs, we have a, a what we call either country metal or country punk. One of the songs we have a western yodeling song on it. Uh, we, we, it we play whatever music we feel like playing. And Norwegian Soft Kitten, Alan and I recorded years ago, we did the theme songs to our two movies, uh, The Worst Movie Ever and To Die Is Hard. So if you've listened to the closing theme song in either of those albums, you've heard Norwegian Soft Kitten already. Uh, but this will be our first full album uh, endeavor. So we're hoping to have that uh, released in the next month or so, maybe September, October 2020. We have a whole bunch of critics lined up. Uh, who are going to give it a listen. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of indie radio stations we're going to be sending uh, our first release out to and uh, our first single. So hopefully some good things happen there. So those are some of my thoughts on uh, filmmaking. And you're always welcome to contact me. I'm on Twitter. Just at my name, Glenn Burgett's G-L-E-N-N-B-E-R-G-G-O-E-T-Z. So you can always contact me uh, on Twitter at just my name, Glenn Burgetts. Send me a DM. Give me a follow. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks so much, Tony, for allowing me to be part of this.